What's up everyone, Alan Morrow here and welcome to this acid rack for Ableton Live. Let's jump straight in and I'll show you exactly how this thing works. Okay, so what you can see here, this is the Ableton Live 11 version. There is an Ableton 10 version also in the pack, but please note that it is slightly watered down due to the capabilities between Ableton Live 10 and 11. I will go into that in, later on in the video, so be sure to stick around to see exactly the different changes that are in the Ableton 10 version. So let's get started on the Ableton Live version. So as you can see here, uh, I spent a lot of time on this rack. Uh, it's basically designed so that you can create nice acid sounds uh, very kind of quickly. Um, you can see here a lot of the different parameters um, used to create these nice acids and I'll go through each of these in a, in a moment. Um, but yeah, it's also got a, a random button there as well, which is probably the the biggest feature of this whole rack so it allows you to create different acid sounds just from the click of a button uh, and I'll go into that in just a moment too so let's get started anyway so as you can see here we've got acid style now acid style is a dial between using a saw wave and a pulse wave if it's over to the left hand side right down here it's a saw and if it's a onto the right, it's a pulse, um, like the original 303. Only difference with this is you can kind of morph between the two. So let me just show you here, I've got a piece of MIDI, acid MIDI here from one of my uh, acid MIDI packs on the website. So I'm just gonna play this for you. So this is the saw and I'm gonna morph between the two so you can have a little listen. So you can kind of morph between the two there. We then have the uh, frequency. Now with the frequency as well, we can also come in here and we can move around the um, different velocity velocities. This is mapped to the, the frequency envelope as it closes down. We can have it up. So you can play around with the uh, frequency envelope here as well. So a nice little feature there. Um, we also then have the resonance, obviously. A nice little twangy sound there. Uh, inside this rack as well, there's three different styles of sort of saturation that you can use, um, either singly or as a combination of the three. So the first one here is the this one, this brown one here. Now, the way to kind of where I would cycle through to hear the different saturations is that I turn the saturation amount up. Now, because of the way that the macros are set up inside um, Ableton, I can't have one for every single uh like number, so just flick between it and you'll see it's cycling through different saturations. So that's the first saturation. We then have the decay time. We want to shorten that there. We have um, some delay and reverb that we can dial in as well here. Set up for you. We then also have the glide. I'll switch MIDI for this one. Um, we can glide between the different notes there. Then we have this drive knob here, which is uh, another form of saturation slash distortion for this. As I said, you can use different ones in. Then we have the second distortion here. Now, when it's at zero, it's off, and when it's on 127, it's on. There is uh, a point at which it turns on and off as well. I think it's around 64 here. Um, now, the reason why this has been left, apart from the fact that you have to kind of do this um, with Ableton macros, is when we come to use the random, what's going to happen here, we're going to get different combinations of it kind of being on and off, along with the different distortion types here. So what we have, same with the saturation type here, other different distortion types. I just dial up this. So you can see here that the colors 
are uh, matched to the actual different distortion. So this distortion here, the black ones, you can see different distortion types. Let's turn it on. We can cycle, if I turn it all the way up, we can cycle through. So different distortions there. And then we have also uh, a quick EQ here for low, mid, and high. Now, the beauty of this whole rack is the random button here where we can get different inspirations for different sort of acids um, that we might not have got just trying to design them from ourselves. So you can obviously design them yourself here, but this random button here might give you some uh, nice inspiration too. So sometimes you're obviously going to have to tweak it um, because the filter might be right down or, you know, different things like that. So... The delay and reverb and the EQ is it removed from the randomization so that you can always just dial that in and you can flip between, you know, you set your reverb and your whatever, uh, set your reverb and your delay to where you want it and then just the randomize the rest of them. different assets there now if you're using the Ableton 11 version I have included uh, a couple of presets here as well which is a different pattern so there's 10 presets there if you're using the Ableton 11 version they're not in the 10 version because of the fact that you can't use the different variations but just hitting that random button is going to create a load of different presets for yourself anyway. Um, then I've taken this one step further. So like the original 303, it was in mono, but I have gone and chose, um, well, given you different options as well for different styles of acid. So we have the mono version, which is only going to let you play one note at once at a time. Sorry. Then we've got the poly version. Uh, which is going to let you play a couple of different notes. And then we have the unison version, which I really kind of like, especially if you um, wanted to just add a little bit of extra flavor to your acid sounds and take it away from, I guess, the the original uh, Acid 303 sort of style. Um, so if you just select which one you want here, you could also combine them together if you wanted to by layering them. But let's have a little listen. So, so this is this. It basically uses whatever settings are here and it changes it to either mono or unison. And you can dive in deeper and change the amount of uh, voices in the unison mode if you want. So... Let's go through some of the presets again, I guess. This is in unison mode. Mono mode. So many different options that you can use there to create yourself some nice acid sounds. So let's jump into the Ableton 10 version and I'll show you exactly how this one is kind of set up. Okay, so this is the Ableton 10 one. Now, although it has um, less capabilities in terms of it doesn't have the, the random button function uh, and it also doesn't have the presets, one thing that it does have that the other one doesn't is um, separate effects rack for each of the different mono, poly, and unison. So if you were to layer them up, you can obviously then um, change the effects per layer. Whereas in the original one, the effects is just for the whole for the whole uh, rack. So let's have a little quick look at this one. As you can see here, what I've basically done due to the capabilities of the macros with inside uh, Ableton 10, um, I've split the split it into two different parts. We have the actual acid sound itself, and then we actually have the effects rackets um, here next to it. So if you want to turn the effects off altogether, you could do so, for example. So same things again, 
as the other one. You've got this, uh, the saturation types, all these different things. So... And the glide and everything like that. So it's it's very very similar. Um, obviously, just a few different changes there with inside the rack. So if you'd like to grab a copy of this, then be sure to head over to alanmorrisstudios.com and grab your copy there. Uh, have a lot of fun with this, guys. It'd be interesting to see what sort of acid sounds that you come up with. Uh, yeah, and I hope you enjoy it. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>